All right, for a few more parts that we didn't cover in the first video, this is called the nut. I don't know why I forgot to mention that. It's a weird name. I don't know why they call it the nut. Uh, in old guitars, they were made out of bone. Now they're usually made out of some super dense plastic kind of stuff. I've even I've seen guitars that have metal ones. Um, the little things that the strings wind around, those are called capstans. Um, there are all kinds of interesting layman's terms that people call those things. I've got a string winder, which I don't use for really any reason other than when I'm putting new strings on and I need to crank them on there fairly quickly. <clears throat> I mentioned that this is the top, but you also have the back and the sides. <clears throat> this is the heel of the neck, and usually um, you'll have a strap button or an end pin that actually go comes out, but it works like these pins and uh, will serve as the strap button. And then, for me, I prefer to have a strap button here in the heel so that it hangs here. I do not like the kind of strap that ties around the headstock. I feel like that puts unnecessary stress on the neck. Maybe I'm wrong, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't like that. Um, I know there was something else that I meant to mention, but I think that's about it. So the rest of this video is going to be about tuning. So you know that you have from low to high, E, A, D, G, B, and E. Now if your guitar is in tune, and mine is not completely in tune, um, there are a few different ways that you can tune without using a tuner. If you have a relatively decent, say, E on your lowest string, then at the fifth fret, you have A, which will sound just, just like the string below, or, you know, the next string up is what I should say. So then that's A. Fifth fret on A, you have D, which is the pitch of the next string. Fifth fret on the D string, the fourth string, you have a G, which is that next string, the third string. Now, an interesting thing with the way guitar strings work, the way tuning is, when you go from the G string to the B string, you're actually G, A, B flat, B you're tuning that next B string with the fourth fret on the on the G string. And then once you get up there, it's back to the fifth fret on the B string to get your high E. Now there's also a method of tuning using harmonics. Harmonics are when you just lightly touch the string And it's kind of complicated, um, but if you strike a harmonic on the 5th fret of your E string, a harmonic at the 7th fret on your A string should be the same pitch. And for a lot of people it's easier to hear the harmonics than to hear the subtleties and the difference between the ringing strings. So you've got stuff to, to cover later. Uh, also, you have harmonics, natural harmonics, at the 12th fret. Where this is useful is if you want to drop this string, your E string, down to D, which is necessary uh, to play the song that we're trying to learn. You can hit the harmonic on the A string at the 12th fret, and then the 7th fret on the E string and drop it to match. So in drop D tuning, 
if you strike all three of your lowest strings, you get a power chord. So you can make power chords just with your one finger. That's all for now.